Hello everybody, I'm Henry Lee. Thanks for joining me again on this uh, uh, live streaming video channel. Today we're going to do a synonym. I can't pronounce this uh, word. Um, or the artist uh, name seal for wild horse. Uh, this is the Chinese nickname given by uh, Cassie. The client name is actually Cassie um, in Ohio. She practiced uh, Tai Chi and uh, her Tai Chi teacher's wife uh, give this nickname to, to her. Let me write this in, uh, we call this standard script, okay. In Chinese, we write from uh, top down, from uh, right to left. And uh, those of you who study Chinese language, you might heard of the traditional Chinese characters versus the uh, um, contemporary or simplified. This is the simplified, simplified um, character for horse. And this is the traditional one. And for this one, it's the same, but there are variations of uh, uh, variation forms of the same character in uh, the ancient script. We call it seal script or zhuan shu. Zhuan shu, seal script. In Japanese, it's a uh, tensho, tensho, I think. Maybe uh, that's name in Korean also because this seal script is used by uh, artist in the seal engraving for um, for almost two thousand years or more and longer because uh, uh, we we still use them on in the seals um, if you if you search seal script, you will see an entry in the uh, online dictionary, Wikimedia, or other, you know, website for information. Seal script. This is what I use to uh, design. But within seal script, there are lesser seal script, great seal script, or bronze style, oracle bone style. Um, it has different forms over the uh, evolution uh, in chronotic, uh, chron chronological, um, historical context. The oracle bone style, the earliest pictograph, then uh, bronze style in Shang and Zhou dynasties. Um, in Han Dynasty, we, we developed the seal script or uh, studied in the first emperor's uh, era, the uh, Qing Dynasty. So you can uh, check online for this uh, script. So if you ask me which, uh, you, sh you know, please use traditional Chinese. Uh, of course, it's tra tra traditional Chinese, but uh, it would read it would be written like this, you know, <coughs> um, something like that, you know, I would say. I think if there's an extra leg there. <coughs> One, two, three, four, yeah. Anyway, <coughs> so this is the, the seal script for horse. You can see the uh, difference, right? And wild is the... Uh, um, it's still the same, but sometimes we write a little differently. You know, you can you can write instead of uh, put this on the right, you can you can separate them for the earth because um, wild 
you know, it has to do with the earth, the earth radical and the field the radical could be combined or separated. So this is all variational form of uh, the same character. And if you ask me, can you design uh, it in Japanese? Kanji, yes, the Japanese kanji um, is the same in written language because uh, kanji means Chinese characters. Um, it was this, the alphabetical kanas, which represent sounds. We, we use only in Chinese the uh, pictographs or ideographs, you know, there's uh, pic little icons, you might say. Um, so in, in, on the seal, we use the, we use the kanji only in Japanese, I think. And also Korean seal uh, can also use this. So we, we do use traditional Chinese uh, or complicated Chinese, if you want. We don't, we don't use the simplified form. It's only for writing um, for me or, you know, or today's uh, books and publications in China. Uh, overseas Chinese still use the traditional Chinese characters in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and uh, overseas Chinese. Um, and then some may ask what uh, dialect you, 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 you use for your design. And this is an irrelevant question still, because Cantonese or my dialect is maybe Nankinese or Pekingese, whatever, we call it Mandarin, um, Cantonese. There are different pronunciations, just like I speak English with a Chinese accent. You can, you can say I have a Chinese dialect, right? But I don't really have a uh, different spell. It's, it's spelled the same. So it, the, the written form, the Mandarin and Cantonese are the same. Are you clear on that? Because I still get questions. I don't blame you for that. It's very confusing. The Chinese, same Chinese in Taiwanese dialect and the Cantonese, it sounds foreign language to me. Um, but we share the same written language, not like a difference between Spanish, Chinese, I mean, uh, English or or French, maybe you know, you, it's similar to that, but the grammar might be different, right? Cantonese and Taiwanese, even though have much different in grammar, but we use different vocabulary sometimes. The dialect is accent to begin with. It's, it's just like local people speak English, you know, New York or California accent. It could be dialect. Dialect means how you pronounce it, but not the way you write it, right? Um, Okay, how do we translate your name into Chinese? There's no way to translate English name or any Western language, you know, based on sound uh, or phonetic tra translation. There, there is a way, you know, we call it phonetic translation. So we can use for Cassie, um, the phonetic translation is um, if you check Google, I'm not sure, but it will be something like that, I think. Well, it, because we don't have equal sound, so you will pronounce as a close, but you know, kai, kai shi. That's how close you get. And everybody would use uh, this, these two characters. If you're Cassie, you know, you, you, will, you will use just like David or Cat. So in Chinese, we use different uh, characters in first names. So there are unlimited possibilities to personalize your first name, uh, unlike Western name, you only have limited first names, but more family names. But in China, we only have 100 family names. That's a rough number. Okay. But it's very limited. It means, you know, you, you cannot 
use anything as your last name, but his family is, you know, everybody is like Li, my last name, or Zhang, or Chen, like a Chen style Tai Chi, you know. They're major family names. Um, but in, in first name, you can use any dictionary, words in the dictionary, um, to create your name. So we have to create your name, not just translate your name. So uh, Ye Ma, white wild horse, that's the meaning of this uh, uh, Cassie's uh, Chinese name. It pronounced Ye Ma. Ye Ma has nothing to do with Cassie in, in pronunciation, right? Uh, but it it's a uh, um, it's more personalized. You, uh, it, it maybe reflect her personality. I don't know why uh, her teacher's wife give this nickname. It must to do with you know with personality. Also, um, it may relate to her Tai Chi class because uh, in Tai Chi movement movement we have in any style Tai Yang style Chen style Tai Chi we have this movement called. Let me just write simplified Chinese. This is complicated. Man, um, horse parting man, horse pa parting man. Um, when we translate that, we 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 don't translate the word wild horse in in China in English. You may have heard. Horse party man is the name for that um, particular move in Tai Chi. But uh, uh, the, the Chinese, you know, we always use four words to um, the title, you know, to give the, the label to the movement in martial arts. So they, we do call it Ye Ma. Fenzhong means wild horse, parting man. So this has to do with Tai Chi. If you are not a Tai Chi student, um, I won't think this seal is suitable for you for, for, or for Cassie. So if I help you to create your name, I would like to, you know, to get some personal traits like your, what kind of art you like what you do, you know, um, something has to do with your, your personal personality. So this is very personalized for, for the um, name creation or um, anyway, so this is part of my series. When you order the seal, I will um, help you get the right name. Uh, cannot do it before I receive your order because it's very, um, very complicated. You know, very uh, time-consuming and uh, brainstorming. You know, a lot of um, communication. And uh, people do charge that for a service. We we can also just do your name, and with uh, calligraphy design maybe. Uh, so if you don't want a seal, we can also do that. Uh, I'll put a link um, later in the video description if you want your name to be uh, created in Chinese. Okay. Um, so after we got your Chinese name, um, we will, I will uh, create some designs for you to to choose. And here are some other designs or versions. For the same design as you s uh, saw earlier on the lower left, now it's uh, the flipped version, which means a revert, inverse version, not flipped. Flipped means a mirrored, right? The inverse version means uh, uh, positive become negative, ne negative become positive. Um, 
this is in style or negative carving style. So the stroke is in white, background in red. And this one is uh, another design, uh, same characters, um, with a little broader stroke. Um, it's a yang style or neg uh, positive carving um, because the stroke is in red or positive, um, while the background is white. And uh, this is the inverse version of the same design. As you might see, you know, which one is easier? They're both uh, the same. To, you know, the Yan style may looks more complicated. I would say it takes more time to carve, but the Yin style is not easy either. <laughs> it's more calligraphic. Okay. And this one um, is a little different in design. It's more organized or structured with more um, squarelized form, you know, like uh, the other strokes are uh, either horizontal or vertical, but with some um, special um, deviation from that on the character Ye or wild. I try to make it uh, look a little wild. I can also make this two um, triangle or rectangle. I forgot that shape name into squares. You can also just put the two squares. It will look more organized even. But I try to make a little variation from the totally, you know, structure or abstract. And this is her. Actually, we we will try to decide to decide between this one and the first one. And this is also my second favorite. This is the inverse version. So Cassie wants the in style, or the yang style, actually, uh, the positive style, rather than the in style. That's so that we we would decide between we 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 decide between these two, this and uh, this. So finally, I I help her to. Um, Pick this one because this one is a lot more dynamic in um, as in Tai Chi movement, more balance, more uh, white space and uh, co uh, contrast space, and uh, you know just less um, less like straight lines, more uh, dynamic lines. But again, it's based on personality. If you are a scientific person or, you know, uh, you might choose other versions. So, and you might ask, can I see your design first? No, because this takes me like four hours starting from research to uh, finished um, design. So this text, it, it took most of my time to, to do the design. Uh, sometimes I cannot do this many styles. It really depends on the situation. If I have more inspiration, I will do more. Uh, sometimes just two between you know yin and yang. So this is what we're going to do. The next thing is to um, put the design onto the stone. I made um, some uh, stamps you know, with the computer. I have to make the the um, imp the print uh, with a laser jet because this process only works with a laser printer or copier with toner. Tono ink, not uh, ink, the inkjet won't work. 
in traditional, um, you might, I, somebody passed me a video the other day on Facebook, and I, 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 they found this uh, on YouTube. Uh, a Facebook friend passed me a video showing the Japanese traditional way of doing that. They still use a brush. You can you can use a brush to write the characters in uh, mirrored, you know, way and then carve it. Um, but I learned from a, a customer of mine. He he used to to work for Kinkos, the copy store, and uh, they use the chemical called acetone to remove ink uh, from the laser copier and this can also be used to transfer also my wife uh, my um, daughter uh, should told me that in, in her college uh, car print class they also use this uh, making a uh, monoprint maybe on paper so this is how it works you can you can see how neat it is same as you as, you, as if you make a print on the stone. Oops, I think the focus may be off a little bit. Maybe. I had another question from uh, the client. Uh, she asked me what the actual size of the, in the print would be. Um, it would be a, a little bit smaller, as you will see. I always uh, start this step first, because I would round up the corners to make it look uh, more antique, more like an old Old seal. So we round up the corners and the, the edges. So this, the actual print would be a little bit smaller than the stone size. This is three quarter inch stone. So the final print will be something like a five eighths. Okay, so we start. So the, the edge of the, the line will not be so hard. And it also can vary from the uh, imprint uh, and uh, pressure. Of course, if you press harder, it will get bigger lines, <laughs> you know, and make the ink look slightly thicker or stronger. I take the risk to this time to do uh, Usually I start from the middle of the space like that, then I uh, cut out the background gradually towards the line. But I can also start from a contour cutting and then kind of scoof, scooping out the background. Um, I think if you do it, you may, you should do this like this. You start from the center of the, the empty space and then you gradually because this is the deepest part, you gradually getting close to the stroke. This this is the safe way to do it. Most people will think you cut around the, the stroke and then scoop. That's what I try to do. Maybe it works, maybe not. But if you make you know a mistake, you cannot go back. You, if you cut out the stroke, you cannot add it.
are made to both. Sometimes I start from the center of the background. Sometimes maybe there's no no um, right answer. You have to go with your experience and you know have to find out best suitable way for you to proceed. You can just, if you don't, you know, are not familiar with this, you start from the center, just like testing it. Then you, you have a, when you get a better feel, you, you do this the other way, you know, you can cut along the stroke. Just like you test the paper, test the water, you know, before you jump in. If you committed something too soon, you will have trouble. This is to, you know, start from um, the center, so you have a fat stroke. Then you get, you make it thinner and thinner. This is, just, again, it's a very uh, practical way or safe way to do it. Then you cut the contour, like, you know, I already cut the line too close. Cannot add it back. But fortunately, <coughs> this style has a uh, variational thickness in strokes, so I, I can make it a look, make it up, look okay. Just cut shallowly, maybe you know very accurately first. You can do that. Sometimes I do that just to make a mark to remind myself where the line is because I cannot really see after it got dust on it. Oh, another question I happen to recall when uh, from someone who had their own logo design. Uh, I, someone showed me a logo in, in email. It's a computer design, uh, like an illustrator or some software generated. So it's very uh, sharp and uh, clean. I cannot do those logos. If you, if you want, you can try to uh, make your logo you hand draw your logo uh, with a marker pen, so convert the logo into a hand drawing. Then I may be able to do it because, as you can see, this kind of media cannot reproduce the the uh, slick, uh, you know, design of a logo because the chipping that. We, you know, we can certainly make your logo look like a, a, a Chinese character if you, you know, if you like. So, yes or no question. If it's too geometric, you know, it's hard to do. If it's an image like a bear or something, I did a fish or some or a horse I can do that maybe.
<coughs> this is the <coughs> mirrored image of the design, so I have to look at that. We normally w uh, make the envelope before we do the inside. So for this uh, little uh, square thing, I, I'll do the outer contour and then work on the details.
<coughs> the four space in this uh, field radical has to be different from each other, so not the same. Make one kind of incomplete or broken. Okay, I will work on this horse part. You have to make all the parallel lines uh, parallel, to each, parallel to each other and the distance between them the same. Uh oh, ah, I think I missed his joke. This horse man missed a stroke.
Okay, I think I have to redo this, unfortunately. Let me see if I can make it up. Let me check dictionary and see if I can find a reference that has less main. It has been parted, maybe split. Just like the Tai Chi move, maybe. Okay, this is hard to make up if there's something wrong like that. Missing stroke. In, in traditional writing, some strokes could be less or more, but some may not. Okay, let me see what uh, we can do with this. <coughs> um, if you look at uh, the design and uh, my my carving, I when I you know I, maybe I wasn't paying attention. So that that stroke in between these two was lost. I think there was something there, but not enough. So I will have to see if I can find justification for that. Or uh, we have to redo it. So there should be... So we've got some references here, I think. If I can split the tail, let me show you what we have. My computer just locked. I have to come back. I think my computer is locked.
Okay, let me let make a inference to see how it looks like now. Okay, what happening is the there should be a stroke here. Yeah, yeah. So I miss it. I was thinking about this, but the tail was different. The three struggle tail, and it was I think we better do it, maybe we're not. Okay, let's see how it It's still readable, but not uh, complete. Yeah, this one is not complete. So we just have to erase it, I think. Let me just use a different stone so I can use this. Yes, this lady. Sorry about that. So we'll start over again. This time no talk. Concentration is really crucial. as well, but it takes a while to do that. Let me just start working.
When you make a mistake, then you become really loose. <laughs> so I use a big knife trying to make it up. to the, the previous time I've spent, I almost memorized, I almost I memorized the, the design, so I can do it faster. And repeating is a very good exercise. I know where the difficulty is, so I start from there right away. Should be three spins there.
this is more live we can do the video. Just like painting the image to make the big picture first. This is the struggle here, yes. I will start this way. So, should go left. I think it's done. Let's see. I think I got the wild chi in it. <laughs> the wild horse chi. Let's see what it looks like.
I don't like it. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, I'll sign it now. Let me just show you the previous one. I tried, I was trying to do more detailed work, but I got lost in my work. So um, it's more like a, an integral, more carefree. Kind of, um, so we make a artificial reprint. Here are some of the works I've done this year.
outside on the left side of the video. So you can see, you can tell the orientation. to sign. I'll take some pictures and I'll do it. Just like a painting as you can see, you got uh, the emotion into it. It's better than doing it um, rationally. Just sometimes just have to express yourself. Like a mood seal, you know, we call it. It's a mood seal. This is my signature shop. Yes, you see this. You know how old I am. My sixties. Bless you. Thanks for watching. Thank, thank everybody for watching. Thank you for comments. I'll see you again in the future. Thank you, Cassie, for your commissioning. Bye-bye.